Hey everybody, Jeff Marr with Elizabeth School District and joining me is Megan Winninger, Vape Prevention Education Coordinator for the school district. Thank you for joining us, Megan. Thank you for having me. So you are a new hire and a new face here at the school district. Yes. And we wanted to introduce you to our community and talk about your position because you're gonna be putting out communications to parents district wide about what you're doing here and the grant funded position that you are taking on. That's so right. that's what we want to focus on. So let's go ahead and start with the position and what you're going to be doing here. Okay. Well, again, thank you for having me. Sure. Uh, so to begin this position, it's new to the district. It's new to the state. Um, it is a result of a class action settlement statement with Jewel, who um, is a vape uh, producing manufacturer. Mm -hmm. um, and as a result of that settlement, they had to provide grant funding for schools to implement prevention programming uh, throughout Colorado. So Elizabeth was a recipient, one of 30 schools that received funding for these types of pro programming, mm -hmm. um, which I'm extremely grateful to be a part of. It's really exciting. Um, it is going to be K through 12 programming. In the elementary, it's going to be largely parent and teacher focused, just trying to just get some knowledge and education about what vaping is, the concerns we're having as a district, what parents and teachers can start looking mm -hmm. for, how they can identify products and talk to the kids in a way that's going to be educational and helpful. Um, and then, you know, as we get into the middle school and high school ages, it's going to be, again, a lot of prevention and education. Um, and then as we're starting to see some behaviors, it's going to include some interventions and options for the students to get some cessation help if there is a dependency that is developed. And let's talk about some of the concerns with vaping for those who don't know. Have you been able to identify some, some of that and what you're going to be communicating out about the issues relating to vaping? Sure. So a lot of the research out there is saying, you know, vaping is very new as far as like medical the research world knows. Um, so what they're finding short term is it's highly addictive and it's very chemical laden. And so the nicotine alone, um, the, the statistics, and I don't wanna say the wrong one, so I'm not gonna give you numbers, but mm -hmm. um, the statistics are alarming on how quickly adolescents specifically are becoming dependent on, uh, on nicotine. Um, and so because their brains are still in the development stage uh, during high school and even after high school, uh, the nicotine has an even more uh, heavy impact, I guess, uh, on that developing brain. And so what my goal and what the district's goal is to help prevent the kids from even starting so that they don't have to deal with that dependency and addiction as they're mm -hmm. uh, trying to also navigate adolescence and school and going to college and becoming an adult. And typically, what's the age where students start experimenting with this? So they're saying middle and high school um, nationwide, so this isn't necessarily specific to this community, but nationwide, one in four middle and high schoolers have at least tried vaping. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's pretty prevalent. Um, it's a pretty big concern. Um, as far as this community, you know, unfortunately I don't have that statistic. So one of my hopes is to really do some outreach and find out you know, how big of a concern is it specific mm -hmm. to this community. Now, your office is located at Elizabeth High School, mm -hmm. same place where you graduated from. Yes, <laughs> yes. So that worked out really well. Yeah. And you also live in the area, too. I do. Yeah. yeah. Me and my family, we have some land out in Albert. So mm -hmm. it's a nice, easy commute into work every yeah. day. And um, so this is, you know, this is home and it has been home for a long time. It's good that your office is located there. Yes. Just from a strategic standpoint, it seems like you're really going to get to know the, the students and the staff and the parents there, yeah. which is going to be an important part of your communication and community building effort in getting that education out. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I really want to be a resource. I want to be somewhere that parents and staff and students can come to me with questions and get some you know, resources and tools on how mm -hmm. to either overcome an addiction or avoid an addiction completely. And so my goal is to be um, be that tool, be that resource, be that place where people can can come um, without the fear of being in trouble or anything of that nature. And what's your plan for your approach? Are you going to be visiting classrooms or 
holding sessions, seminars to students? How, what, what do you plan to do this school year? Um, all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of going to be a big undertaking. Um, there is some classroom specific curriculum that we're, you know, hoping to be able to roll out through like uh, health classes. Um, there is going to be some school specific assemblies that is going to be largely just educational. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be some teacher specific trainings on um, how teachers can handle those types of conversations. And when they do catch a, a student having, you know, vaping behaviors or with a vape, you know, how can we handle that in an appropriate manner that doesn't solidify that kid into doing yeah. those behaviors in the future. Um, and it's, so it's going to be a very holistic wide breadth. I'm going to have as many touch points as I can muster um, mm -hmm. in trying to get this education and this information out there. So prior to this initiative, how did most schools handle the vaping issue or did they not really give a lot of attention to it? So per the policies that are on board right now, um, if a student is caught vaping or with a vaping device, they are automatically suspended. Mm -hmm. um, they are offered the opportunity to go through uh, Connections for Families. And at that facility, they provide Second Chance, which is a different, it's a educational program. Um, it is an online self-paced program. The student completes at their own time before they can come back to school. Um, and so the concern that, and what this grant was really trying to help schools implement was that policy you know, when the kids are suspended, then that's all that class time that they're missing. And so mm -hmm. they want to start the process of having the students stay in school as much as possible so that they're still receiving those supports. Um, and then also just getting the help that they need to understand what that behavior is doing to their body and how they can stop if they're ready to quit. Have you spent a lot of time researching this topic? Yes, in the yeah. last, uh, since I was hired, I've been up to my nose in mm -hmm. research articles and different programming that's available. And It wasn't really an issue when we were going to high school, It was, was not, it? no. Yeah. This is very new. Um, really, in 2016 to 2018 is when they started seeing that influx, um, especially among adolescents. And so, yeah. this is a, it's a new beast that the schools mm -hmm. are having to overcome. Well, we're glad that you're here Thank you. uh, to help with the education on that. And we look forward to your initiatives and the communications that you're going to be uh, giving out to our community. Is there any other information that you wanted to put out right now to parents or students or all the above? Sure, yeah. Um, feel free to call me or you know send me an email with any questions you might have. I'm happy to be that tool for you, a resource, uh, a place of just education, somewhere you can talk. Um, so that's that's really my role here is, is to be somewhere that can initiate some positive change. All right, sounds good, Megan. Thank you for talking to us about this. Thank you. I have put the email on your screen to contact Megan. You can do that anytime. If you have any questions for me as well, please reach out and be sure to follow us on social media and check our website as well for more content like this. Just visit elizabethschooldistrict.org. Thanks for watching. Thank you.